Hey everyone, it's Jerry here, and today, today we're gonna talk about uh, how to use the colors. So as you can see, um, when I do the painting, I use I use uh, RGB uh, color slide bar instead of using the HSB. I think uh, HSB is better for uh, defining colors. Like when you have the color, you describe the color with the hue saturation and the brightness right which is the value um but uh you, you can use that as uh hsb slide bar to locate the color you use or the locate the color you want to describe but when you do the painting i don't think hsb slide bar is a um, useful uh, tool for paintings so i instead of instead of using that i use uh, a, a rgb slide bar I, I still remember when I was uh, learning art uh, back in school, like, uh, like many years ago, like when I was in high school. Uh, of course, in the beginning, we're, we're, we started from a uh, black and white value uh, sketching. After several years of that, we start doing the uh, colors with the acrylic painting. Uh, every single time, like when I started, when I finish the painting, my teacher, my teachers always say, um, "How come your your painting has no your painting has no color?" I didn't really understand. I, I was like, "What are you talking about? I have many colors in my painting. How come you say there's no color?" And uh, later on, he explained, "Because you use the black and the white to add on your colors instead instead of using complementary colors." Um, I think you guys uh, has the uh, same problem. Some of you guys has the same problem. The dark, the black, sometimes the black is not dark enough. The white color is not bright enough. Just because you're just directly using the black and white, adding into the color you're using right now. So by using the complementary color, which means when you have a um, red apple, if you want to, if you want to paint the dark parts of the uh, red apple, you try to use a uh, green, right? That's a complementary color. If you mix mix the green and the red really well, it tends to be a uh, darker gray or even black. But um, still, sometimes the, even if you mix the colors really well, like red and green to be the darker part. You won't look that. Uh, it, it will be uh, dark enough, but it won't be that interesting. So uh, that's why my teachers told me, try not to mix that well. Try to leave some green at the darker part of the red apple. So it feels like um, uh, dark enough and also same time interesting enough. Okay, that's uh, for the uh, dark dark part. On the other hand, which is the light. And also, sometimes you don't think the uh, the white is uh, light enough or bright enough. Try to use a split complementary color. Uh, I know there's like two colors to be uh, sp a split complementary color for each one color. Um, how to try? How to find the perfect one? Um, normally, like for example, cyan's uh, cyan is a perfect um, complementary color is uh, magenta or close to red. Mm. So when you draw a red apple, same thing, right? On on the light part, the uh, uh, highlight part, if you add a little bit, instead of a, just to a put a, a pure white on there, if you just try to put some cyan, um, a little bit on, on the white part, on, on the uh, highlight, that will be more interesting. So how do you find the perfect uh, uh, split complementary color? It's pretty simple. Just uh, pick one color of, in, in Photoshop and then slide. I'll, I'll put that on the video. Uh, and then slide this bar all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Then you find your perfect uh, color for a perfect uh, supplementary color for that color, for that uh, um, original color. So right here, right, this painting, I'm doing the same thing. 
So that's why I use RGB color because uh, when I have the base color, when I, when I try to be uh, brighter or darker, I just uh, try to find out the uh, complementary color or the split complementary color for that base color. But if you use a, a HSB, you just as, like subconsciously keep using the brightness or like maybe a little bit better you use the uh, saturation bar too but you don't if you keep using hsb bar um you constantly don't really think about the colors you think about the brightness which not that make the painting good but when you use the rgb color bar it for it forces you to always think about colors and also it forces you to think about, oh, right now I want to make a darker color of this base color. So what color should I combine? And uh, also even, even like a gold darker for a certain color, you always also, uh, it, the, the slide bar also forces you to think about it. It tends to be like warmer or cooler for this. Even, even this is a dark area, you want to be darker or warmer. Trust me, uh, force yourself to use uh, RGB uh, color bar because uh, probably in the beginning you don't really you don't really feel good or get used to it. But later on, when you're doing more and more practice, um, your brain tends to uh, think colors instead of only think about the value or the darkness. Um, there's a perfect example you can look look up is uh, uh, there's an artist named Benjamin Zen. Uh, he was my favorite artist when I was in, uh, when I was a, a little or when I was young. Uh, he used the color. He think he always thinks about the colors. You can see his work is like really really exaggerated a lot with the colors. Uh, personally, I think he he's kind of like a overdone, but uh, that's his uh, style. Is I still like his his, his works. But you, you get an idea how to play with the colors. He doesn't use he doesn't use uh, black at all. He like in a lot of his paintings, you can see when when he trying to do like a a, a dark areas. He just used a super saturated blue, but uh, from the painting overall, from the painting, you don't feel the blue is blue anymore. You feel the blue is like a dark black. So that's why I always say, art is always like a trick, right? You're tricking people's eyes. So right now, basically, I spend uh, another uh, couple of hours on uh, doing doing the line work to find more details and. Uh, to, to do the corrections. Also find some more details on this painting. Um, and then instead of uh, merging a uh, line layer and painting layer together, I just uh, create, uh, oh, uh, maybe not yet, later on, like I'll, I'll create another layer on top of the line layer, try to cover up the lines. Because like my, one of my videos saying um, the style, um, when you use a lot of lines, it feels like more cartoony. Um, so when you use a, when you uh, don't have them the, that many lines, it feels more realistic. But uh, pe but some 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 people say if you use a, a colors a too saturated colors, that'll be more uh, cartoony too. So you need to desaturate. Uh, 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 desaturated, uh, desaturated the colors uh, so that uh, you can achieve like a realistic style. But uh, I don't really agree with that. Um, probably that's that's the part of the reasons. But I don't really agree with that because just like a Benjamin Zhang's um, painting, you can see in his painting the all the colors. Like he, he's, I think in one of his interviews said uh, he said. Uh, um, he liked to use the colors like 100% saturation, but uh, his paintings still a lot like realistic. So the fun part of the uh, 
fun part of art is people give you the certain rules, like how to do realistic, how to treat colors, how to this, how to that. But uh, you follow that in the beginning, of course, when you do the、uh, when you're learning. But eventually,、uh, you really like to purposely break the rules, but achieve the same goal, but a higher goal. Like I said、um, uh, in the other video about the、uh, tangency, we don't want the two points like touching each other or two edges touching each other. We always want to like go overlapping each other or stay away from each other. Otherwise, you're gonna create a tangency, which is like really nasty, like、uh, attract、uh, unnecessary attention. But I've seen、uh, one person's work. I forgot who that from, but、uh, I've seen one person's work. Was really impressive, but、uh, all over the all over the、uh, painting are a lot of th- there are a lot of、uh, tendency problems. But in that painting, you don't feel that's a problem anymore. But you you hundred percent sure、uh, the artist was purposely doing that, but give you kind of like a different kind of feeling. But before the before breaking the rules, you still need to learn the skills and the rules first. To know how that how they work, and then eventually you really familiar how they work, how to、uh, how to use them, and then eventually you try to break them to see、uh, what you what you're gonna get. Right now, when I do the faces or the mouth in in this area, I try to I try not to give like a simple color, like oh a、uh, purple ish、uh, lips. I just do purple or magenta. I try to give more color as possible. How to do that? I just、uh, drop down the opacity of the、uh, strokes, and then maybe like fifty percent or forty percent, and then randomly give colors on there to see if that look good or not. If they look good, I just keep that and also fix the colors around that to make that color even pop more. And by the way, when I do the painting like this, like. When I do the last step like this,、uh, when I try to cover up all the lines, I use a mixer brush tool or or, or smudge tool a lot.、Uh, the beauty part is Photoshop didn't have this、uh, function eight years ago or five years ago. It only has that function in、uh, Corel Painter. So a lot of people just、uh, do. Uh, I think I believe a lot of、uh, il- like illustrators, they do the like most of, most of part of the painting in Photoshop because you can do photo bashing, a lot of things, and then、uh, at like seventy percent or eighty percent, they transfer that painting into Painter just to look for that、uh, a smear tool to make that、uh, to、uh, to make、uh, every stroke really smooth. But luckily,、uh, Photoshop. I think they they found this problem, so they make that happen in Photoshop. This is really nice. So the reason we want to make everything smooth out because when you have strokes on the painting, the strokes, the edge of the each stroke, will indicate something, indicate the form change, right? But if you want that form change, that's fine. But the, most of the time, we don't need that form change. That like misleading、uh, the meaning or the Uh, entire painting,、uh, right? So we want to smooth、uh, smooth that out. See, I, I right now just、uh, using this、uh, uh, slide bar right here, like for the lips. I know I want like purplish, magenta-ish、uh, um, color, but I try to like play with the th- three arrows,、uh, three bars to see what other colors. But stay is still in the same range. I can add on to that. Uh, environment. Otherwise, it's just a one color, one purple color will be really boring. So the video of this、uh, painting is still gonna go like a lot more、uh, on the same painting. Like I said, that the longer you do, you're gonna push more, right? You're gonna learn more, even for myself too.、Uh, so I wanna keep pushing this painting. But、uh, I'll talk about not not only th- not only for this painting, but also for something else too. So hope you guys like today's video, and、uh, I'll see you for the next video for more information. Probably not only for the drawing, the painting, this painting, but also some for something else. 
Thank you. Bye-bye.